This is Elocution with your host, Elo Black. This episode is a throwback to a podcast we used to do called The World of Science with Dr. Hans Berger. I did this show with a very dear friend of mine who is a licensed member of the medical community. However, Dr. Hans Berger is fictitious. Viewer discretion and sensibility are advised. Well, I mean, listener discretion, unless you watch this on YouTube. Anyways, please enjoy, be well, and above all, wash your hands. Thanks, pals. Hello and welcome to the COVID Catch-Up with Dr. Hans Berger. I am your host, Genevieve Holcomb Marcellus, and with us, as always, is the brilliant and tireless Dr. Hans Berger. Dr. Berger, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the COVID Catch-Up. Of course. Hello. Good day, everyone. Apologies for not coming sooner, but it's so good to be back and talking about the COVID. Yep. Now, Dr. Berger, we haven't had an opportunity to speak with you in a few weeks because you Mm -hmm. have been on the front lines. My first question to you, Dr. Berger, is, is this the second wave of the virus or the first wave continued? Ah, that's a very good question. It all deals with the science of waves. If we all remember that there was talk about this coronavirus coming on February. February is when the the stories came out. And here in Texas, there was a quote-unquote down shot shut down of the state or the cities for about two months. So that was considered the first wave, but the numbers were held at a steady. This first wave really wasn't a wave. It was like a split into the ocean. It was just the sweltering ocean of pneumonia and COVID and nastiness. And Texas was a little drop in it that wasn't getting much numbers because we had done the necessary arrangements of shutting down, limiting visiting areas or, or eating out, basically big groups people. So the first wave, I would say, is that what we are in now, because we never had reached it or never left the first wave when people were just tired of not being naked in public versus just Instagram and Twitter. So to answer your question about the science of waves, I will say that we in Texas are still in the first wave, if not the peak of the first wave before any second wave even thinks about coming up and saying, here I am, this is me, this is who I am, second wave, come to this destroy you, Texas Lone Star. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Dr. Berger, I'm looking at the CDC reports, and it says that since all of this started, which was back in late January, there is now mm. a total death rate of mm. 134,572 people. Mm. I thought only 2,000 were predicted to perish in this virus. Yeah, this is definitely a lot more than 15 cases down to zero as anticipated by the fear, excuse me, by the president. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Dr. Berger, having been working on the front lines, tell us, is the news report accurate or is it fake news? Are there people that are waiting for intensive care treatment? <laughs> there are some that are tweeting saying that there are empty beds in hospitals. <laughs> Why are there empty beds in hospitals, according to their reports, if there <laughs> are still 35 people alone waiting to get into one hospital's ICU unit? What's going on, Dr. Berger? Ah. Uh, this very, very good question. And this all deals with the science of demand. Provide and demand. What is that little science called? Uh, Supply oh. and demand. Ah, very good. Supply and demand. That's good. You know the science. Anywho, so I do have to say 130 plus thousand people dead. Oh, now if these were fetuses or zygotes, I'm sure they would have been done something immediately. However, these are people that have already escaped the womb and become people who pay taxes. So they are not as important as politicians want them to be. So when the world of the hospitalizations with the nurses and doctors, there are people that are educated. They are trained to take care of people that come to the hospital. And there is a ratio. Find your state ratio about nursing to patient, doctor to patient, because there has to be some limit of safety. So when we focus on just the ICU, of course, there may be beds. However, one will know that in the reports that are given, whether it be this place you call the fake news, or it be the real news, or it be the Xanadu news, the news going out that healthcare workers are getting in 
infected and affected by this virus and becoming sick. So when they are sick, they cannot go to work. They will increase the chances of infecting other healthcare workers. And if all the healthcare workers don't work, of course, you're going to have plenty of beds because there's going to be nothing but dead people packed in there. So when you go to these hospitals that has the empty beds, or if you read these stories about hospitals with millions of empty beds, ask yourself, do they have the proper, I will call them healthcare provider, to take care of the persons who is going to be placed in this bed? Because easily, we could stick a tube down somebody and paralyze and sedate and tie down and strap down and staple down or nail your head down to the bed. But then we can't leave you because we have to care for you if you're on a ventilator, if you have all these what are called drips or continuous infusions that help with pain, help open up your arteries, if you are on some nitric oxide gas that opens up your pulmonary arteries so you can breathe, the beds are there. I will say that. But the healthcare workers are not there. If you want to fill these beds, you are going to have to give up the safety of the institution. And I will tell you that there is no hospital that will give up the safety of the public just to fill beds that the public feels need to be filled just cause. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Dr. Berger, these same people that mm-hmm, are the mm-hmm. same ones that are saying, well, look at Iceland. They're at zero cases. Look at New Zealand. Dr. Berger, what is the difference between the way America is treating and handling the virus? Ooh, that is a very good question. Uh, that, of course, deals with the science of science. I always, in my head, I look at a person and I say, will this person believe that yellow and blue will make green? And of course, they proved to me once they opened their mouths that of course they're not going to believe it because they believe in tinfoil hats and all the chemtrails that are going across the sky that are causing a third eye chakra to bleed out of your offices. It's just a lot of madness. However, and what was the question again? Why are people comparing our situation in America to those with Iceland and New Zealand? What did Iceland and New Zealand do differently ah, yes. than science. America does? Absolute science. So what did these people do? do. Of course, they have less mileage of country. They have less people, I guess you can say, and everyone is kind of scattered around and and far. But you also have to realize they are now back at school. All the kids have gone back to school or are going to school. And of course, they are having fun at the beaches because they followed the science. They sacrificed for the good of the country, for the good of the population so that they could live for another day or perhaps live for several years. And that's what it is, is that they uh, took it upon them themselves to follow the guidelines provided by scientists, provided by profession, and not the word of some hotelier telling us to go on, go forth, purchase the Porsche and the Lexus for your four months old, you know, or whatever they're saying. But yes, they follow the science. When you finally see that yellow and blue make green, you will believe, ah, yes, perhaps we should follow the science. But if you refuse to see that yellow and blue make green, that you think it is purple, I pray for you. I think good thoughts for you that you live forever. That way you can see science for the rest of your life. Well, Dr. Berger, now people are saying that Trump is starting to believe that blue and yellow make green for the fact that yesterday, today is July 12th, he wore a mask to the army hospital. However, there are pictures of him with just the mask partially over his nose. Mm -hmm. He wasn't wearing it, you know, a six-year-old would call properly. Mm -hmm. Dr. Berger, why do you think Trump was wearing the mask? Was it for a photo op? Do you think he's Mm. really concerned about the virus? Well, this is a good question. It all deals with the science of education and maturity. I'm glad that he passed the task of colors and that yellow and blue make green. And now he has progressed to the class of costume construction, but he still has not yet graduated. So it's all in education. We have passed the colors in kindergarten and now... Now we are going to project ourselves to the custom construction at the college level. A little too quick, perhaps, for him. But perhaps his friends had not told him that masks are meant to cover both passages of airway, in and out, of the nose and the mouth. But of course, with the story that's been going around with a lot of the people that I've connected to ventilators, they said that they couldn't breathe with the masks on. I'm so sorry, but that has been unproven because these masks are designed for air to flow in and 
particles not to go out to affect everyone. There's a filter there. And also that filter allows the oxygen to come in. So that has been debunked, but are having even more difficulty now that they have a tube down their throat. However, with this, we have a gentleman that loves the publicity and he wants to prove something. So with this gentleman here, I love the photographs showing that he has taken an opportunity to put on a mask. Does this mean he's just doing it to shut people up? Does this mean that the liberal democratic hoax is actual reality? Or has he been brainwashed with the liberal democratic hoax of an actual virus that's killing people? I want to ask, where in this hospital are these photos taken? Are they taken in an ICU? Are they taken in the lobby? Are they taken in the fish tank holding room with all the beautiful fishies that he's talking to, believing that they are Melania and he's Ivanka? Uh, so when I look at these photos, I want to know where he is. Do you happen to know where in the hospital that he is? And it is an army hospital. So I'm sure they have a special unit for the COVID patients, yeah? Do we know where exactly he is with this mask on? Do you know? No, Dr. Berger. The location mm. in the hospital was not specified. Ah, see, there is the problem, is that if they were to take photos of him in the hallway, because there is always opportunity to cover faces. So until I see that this person, this man, is wearing his mask in an appropriate environment that a mask needs to be put on, then I will be sure that this is more than a photo op. But until then, I do agree. This is a man who wanted an opportunity to flash another Bible after tear gassing people. But of course, he can't bring tear gas into an army hospital because the army is saving it for the protests that were going on. And of course, babies. So Dr. Berger, on that same aspect, so mm. many people, both those that are believers of COVID-19, they are wearing masks, they are taking precautions, and the deniers of COVID are both upset about European and Asian nations refusing to allow American citizens into their country at this time. Mm. My question to you, Dr. Berger, do you think that these nations are denying American access because they are actually afraid of transmission of the virus, or is it kind of a, as the French say, fuck you for building a wall for isolating yourselves. Well, the French are very, very interesting people. So this all deals with the science of perhaps a uh, fuck you. There's a valid reason for, I want to say, this regard for protection of one's own spread of the virus. So you see that their proven irresponsibility on handling the situation of the United States here. You can have your opinion, the public can have their opinion as they wish, but I will say that we are in a situation now where... Of course, you also may have heard that if a person from Texas, such as myself, were to want to visit New York, I would have to place myself or be put in quarantine because of the spike going on here. So you have to take that into consideration is that this is something to protect the country. Now, the back and forth that I have pumped into is that it correlates walls that could be knocked down by wind between Mexico and the United States. But we are dealing with something that decimates a population. I'm not too sure of any one individual Mexican responsible for 130,000 deaths in six months. But of course, I could be mistaken because I never watch Telemundo or Azteca TV, but they may show something on there. I'm not saying that they do. But yes, if one individual from Mexico is responsible for 130,000 deaths in a six-month period, then of course, they could be called for, what is the word, uh, safety. But of course, we have something that is carried from individuals. This virus doesn't give a shiza about your color, a shiza about your gender. This can kill anyone and it's proven to have killed a lot of people and it's proven to have been contracted from infants to the elderly. So with the European nations and Canada and Mexico saying that they are limiting the visits or they are stopping the visitations of Americans, there could be a, perhaps a double entendre with that, is that they are saying you have handled this inappropriately and irresponsibly so we cannot in the safety of our population to limit the number of spread in our own countries to allow travel. That hasn't stopped domestic travel, simply international travel. And of course, they could probably give a big finger to the United States. It's, it could be a both, but yes, it's that science of fuck you that it's very touchy, touchy go. Mm-hmm. 
Dr. Berger, another question going back to American soil. Mm. We read earlier this week that there were certain students at a university, I don't want to dampen the name of the university, that had a COVID challenge amongst its students. Mm. They created a pot of money and whomever caught COVID first won the pot. My question to you, Dr. Berger, again, is there a scientific term for dumb fuck? Mm. And do these children, well, college students, have it if there is such a term mm, it's a very good question and it has to deal with the science of the thesaurus so with the word dumb fuck you know they could be called karen they could be called kyle's i don't know but there is something to say about these people they go to these covid parties and there was a story about a 30 year old young man at methodist who went to a covid party because he thought it was a hoax and he contracted it and he died so if you're going to have a party because you want to see who's going to get the covid i strongly suggest just to think about it before being this quote-unquote dumb fuck with the scientific terminology for a dumb fuck i would have to say i am not too aware of that science but i am willing to take the course on it if there is one Mm -hmm. and dr berger these same people that are trying to either catch covid because obviously they believe it doesn't exist or they believe it exists and that they will just have a cold for the weekend Mm -hmm. these same people are now stating that future president-elect oh did i say that excuse me Mm. that candidate joe biden is going to mandate a covid vaccine for all americans dr berger first question is Uh there an actual patented covid vaccine at this time on july 12 2020 Mm, nine. No, 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 no. There is nine, nine, nine. There is no vaccine for the COVID. There hasn't even been proven cure of this virus. This is something that has treatment. I will say that, that there is something proven effective for treatment. But you have to think about this. There's this ridiculous thing about a COVID vaccine. If the COVID vaccine is already here, they would have already tried to push it for like $5,000 or ruples or whatever the currency in whatever country. Uh, right now, there is no COVID vaccine to date. I cannot say that I'm not working on one, but at this point, nine. There is no COVID vaccine. So that in turn would answer my second part of the question. Would Joe Biden be able to mandate everyone have a COVID vaccine if there is none? Well, perhaps it's difficult to keep him awake for extended period of time. But I will not say that at this point he will mandate. I think that is something fearful because now let's take us back to the 2016. There was a fear of a mandated Sharia law. And we see how well that's turning out because now we truly are wearing masks and people are up and on thinking it's Sharia law, when in actuality, it's something to save our butts. So, you know, there's this fear, this constant fear that people are going to be mandated to do something, that they're going to be controlled, and they fear that it's going on now. They probably think that Biden woke up from his twinkle toe, dream state to say, okay, now let's do what they couldn't do in four years. Let's just do something. Let's say hello. How's that scare people? See me saying hello? Does that scare you when I say hello? Hello? Hello. No, sir. It doesn't scare me at all. Thank you. But Dr. Berger, Mm. what about Betsy DeVos saying that all public school children will be returning to school in August next month? Mm. If so, how will they be able to force children to go or force children to stay home if they are exposed or even have the virus? Mm -hmm. My thinking is with my two children, which are my absolute pride and joy, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. you can't stop them from getting a head cold, lice, and pink eye in the same week. Mm -hmm. How, Dr. Berger, if our children are allowed back in school, are they going to provide appropriate safety for teachers, for faculty, and for my beautiful children? What Mm. are they going to do? I can't get little Steven to wear the shirt I pick out for him. How's he going to wear a mask all day? He's four years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this all deals with the science of danger. Uh, perhaps the lady divorce thinks that we send children with the pink eye to school, we send children with the lice to school, and perhaps it is the lice and the pink eye that catches the COVID and that can cure the pink eye and the lice. She probably did learn that in the school that she went to to gain a great education on how to deal with public education. But with this going on, children going back to school, now there is something to say about in these United States that people were very comfortable sending their children with bulletproof 
those backpacks. Uh, that's not to say that, you know, parents won't throw their children into virus infected cesspools of petri dishes they call library schools or elementary schools or junior high schools. I'm not putting it aside that they won't enforce children to go back. But I will say in an interview that she had not too long ago, perhaps in the past couple of days or hours, she did say that it was probably not a good idea to open schools, but they are going to do it anyway. That should put some kind of thought into people's minds as wanting to get rid of their children to go back to school. And a lot of people have fussed with me saying, we're not getting rid of our children. We just want them to go back to school. Now, I take that as, you, you know, you want to send your children to, to danger. You know, there's already enough danger where classes are getting filled up, the teachers aren't getting enough money, and the budgets are getting smaller, so roofs are caving in, floods and hurricanes are wiping out all these schools and earthquakes. So, of course, let's go ahead and send teachers and students back together to sit 30 to a classroom or 100 to a cafeteria or 200 to a class auditorium and just sit with their sniffles and their snot nose and their sneezing into the air. And of course, there's not enough sanitizer to bathe them completely. So, of course, it's not a good thing. And now I've noticed some schools have put together a template for sudden teacher and student deaths. There was a school by the name of Canyon Schools, C-A-N-Y-O-N, I don't know. But they actually showed a photo that had on their new business teacher student death templates. And I said, oh, I must tell all of my friends who have children, including yourself with little Stephen, make sure that you are aware of what is on these templates for sudden deaths. Because of course, I'm sure they had those before, but now they are different because they are dealing with a virus that has been known to kill quite rapidly and quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Berger, how would we protect our teachers and school faculty? Mm. That's the main thing is the children, yes, are top priority, but mm -hmm. these teachers, they do more than just babysit. They actually educate, but now we're taking even more attention away from the job that they're supposed to be doing and mm -hmm. getting paid, like you said, very little for. And mm -hmm. now they have to turn into CNAs and nurses mm -hmm. as well as try to educate. How are we going to do this, Dr. Berger? I want my children safe, but I want the teachers safe. Good, good. Good question, good introspective look at all this. So it all deals with the science of budget. When we all talk about the budget at the school, I just said that the budget is always up in arms. They can't afford new books. They can't afford new tiles on the ceiling. So how are they going to afford all these gloves and all these masks and all this going on? And the school nurses, do you think they're going to be able to control little Bobby's asthma attack with the COVID when all these other little children that feel weak all at once or... It's all hearsay, of course. It's all what ifs at the moment, but been, and it has been proven that these large gatherings of people cause an increase in the contraction of the virus. And this story about how children cannot contract the virus, that is slowly being debunked. There are children, and as I had mentioned earlier, there are fetuses that have test positive, and there are newborns that are test positive. It is not safe, and it is not precise to say that it is not going to happen, because the microbes and the viruses, they morph. They metamorphosize into something greater. They could met, uh, metamorphosize into something that is resistant to the treatments that we have now. There's a lot of factors to take into consideration, but this is the land of the free who they can only be forced by the one person who they vote for. If it's another person that they don't vote for, they're considering it overreach. But if they voted for the person, they'd say, quote unquote, perhaps that's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Berger, when Betsy DeVos was first placed as the leader of our education system, she said that one of her top concerns was bear attacks at schools. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of any bears attacking children in the classroom in America? Mm, that's a good question, and it deals with the science of natural lies. So I have not followed up on bears attacking students, but I will say that the bears I see at the leather bar when I take my dog walking to the streets of Montrose. Those are the bears that could scare children because they, you know, they wear the high heels and lipstick. They're very free natured. You know, that kind of free nature could scare a child, but at the same time, it could inspire a child. So if that kind of bear at the leather bar is what's going into schools and inspiring people and inspiring children to be better thinkers, better students, and by all means, get attacked by those bears to be in 
inspired. But of course, right now, America is too busy shooting the bears because they've removed the law that says you cannot kill bears. So now they're shooting them while they're hibernating. They're shooting them just randomly. And of course, they're taking the cubs from their mother and killing the mother. So they're killing the bears, of course, that were feared to frighten these children. So no, I would have to say that her education has reached her again. The private school education where she thought that bears are going to attack children. It just proves the failed leadership and the irresponsibility of this country taking care of crisis situations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Dr. Berger, let's talk more politics. So much is going on mm-hmm. since mm-hmm. we last spoke. Let's back it up to approximately two weeks ago with the Republican rally mm-hmm. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hi. Now, Dr. Berger, I'm an older sort of woman. I am not familiar with the application that is TikTok. Mm. Can you please explain to some of us fogies what is TikTok yeah. and how did TikTok and something called K-pop, how did it influence the expected amount of people at the Tulsa, Oklahoma rally? What is TikTok? What is K-pop? Ah, uh, yes. And this all deals with the science of millennials. A lot of people, they pardon the expression, but they clap on the millennials, but they do have some interesting bits of, of attacks, I should say. So this TikTok is a software that there is a group of people that feel that it is something done by the Chinese government as a form of control to get in your phone. And what it is, is people take these bites of sounds. I think here they're called sound bites. So they take these bites of sounds on their mouth, the words over it, kind of representative of a lip sync drag show. So they mouth these little tidbits, these bites of sound. They record themselves and they share it online. There's a big following. I'm sure that almost all of Young America has a TikTok account. And there's this group in Korea called K-pop, or I should say it's a genre of music. A lot of young androgynous Korean performers, particularly one that's about seven young people. And they have yellow hair, red hair, and the black hair and earrings and they have little cute feet. So there's this K-pop group that they sing this pop music of Korea and they have a big following here in the States because the individuals are very cute and they have taken over. That was the word of what they used for this quote-unquote attack on Tulsa. So this K-pop which are these Korean pop stars had the power to persuade a group of millennials and younger people to donate and get tickets tickets to this rally and sell it out. Over 1 million tickets, they said. So, yes, and of course, when the rally happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, people had been waiting there for days because they thought millions of people were coming and then the day finally arrives and there was only 1,000 or 2,000 people there because the K-pop TikTok crew of the world had bought all the tickets and Paul de Fior had to cancel the outdoor party and he had to to limit the camera views to just him because if they had taken all the empty seats, it would have proven what a failure he is. Now, Dr. Berger, what is going on with the Epstein case? What is going on with Maxine Jeslane? Uh, I understand she was on the run and found in New Hampshire. Mm. Why was she indicted, Dr. Berger? What does she know? What did she do for Jeffrey Epstein? And what do you think is her fate? Ah, uh, well, this brings me back to the year of 2016. This all deals with the science of nasty woman. So we have this lady here who just by admitting that she has child pornography in her possession, that is convicted felony, that is a crime, period. When this nasty woman has that, and she says that she has all this from the Epstein of Jeffrey that was hung by Bill Box, excuse me, that was found hung in his jail cell. So when this woman proves to the world that she has video of prominent people, rich people in orgies with the youth of the world, und in or I'll just say it, they are raping these children, young children, that is a felony. This woman should not be out of anyone's sight at 
oil, 24 hour surveillance with an actual person looking at her. I will say that because we already saw what 24 hours video watch did. These guardsmen magically disappear or they fall asleep and they can't find videotape of what happened through the Epstein. Bill Barr will tell us what happened. Anywho, so we have this woman found in New Hampshire. I, I'm not sure if she wanted to find the honey or some type of new jam she was preserving up there in New Hampshire. But the point is, she was found. And she does not need to be let go. Because she has something that has been followed for many, many years. That has been theorist after theorist talking about basements and pizza parlors and pornography rings. So if it is proven, now is the time to just let her rip. Not, uh, you know, not, that's a p- p- horrible choice of words, but we should just let it present itself. What is taking so long? If she has all these videos on VHS, 8-track, laser disc, DVD, cassette player, whatever, the authorities that are going to not make this one-sided, when they need to present their case, they don't need to present the video evidence to the public, but they need to present this case to get the ball going. And that's what this lady is. She has this horrible collection of videos and she needs to be dealt with immediately on the Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So from what I understand, her defense team is stating that she did not participate in any of said orgies or did not hold the horrible, horrific pornography for her own. She said mm-hmm. that she was holding it in order to indict Epstein. But uh, at the uh, same time, why wasn't this presented, Dr. Berger, when he was first apprehended before he, um, I guess you would say, committed suicide? Mm, that's very and oh my gosh what would jesus do that's what i would ask so someone walks up to you now i understand where she's coming from and it makes perfect sense your friend walks up to you with a video of child pornography on the snickers bar of course you're going to hold the video of the child pornography i mean that's it's just a genius idea no Eh, I don't buy it. No one should buy it. And if you're buying that, you're suffering from the COVID. I need to be put in one of those empty beds that doesn't have any nurses or doctors. Because what's going on there is that you had the information. You know the information that you have. Period. Period. Whether you use it or not for your personal benefit, that doesn't even matter. You have this video. You should have taken the Snickers bar. And it's satisfying. You know, with the nuts and the caramel and the milk chocolate. Almost reminds me of like... Like Willy Wonka, like I found the golden ticket in the Snickers bar. That's what I want to find. There is no golden ticket in Kitty Pond that this lady was holding on to for her friend who was killed. I apologize. Absolutely. But Dr. Berger, mm-hmm. let's get back to what's going on with the PPP loans. I understand that many established churches have received these loans. It was mm-hmm. just released mm-hmm. in the... Now, mm-hmm. Dr. Berger, my church is my life. However, I understand Mm. that by our current law system, that churches do not pay any sort of taxes to Mm. the IRS. They Mm -hmm. are tax exempt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that is true, Dr. Berger, then how did these organizations receive triple P loans? Mm. That is a very, very deep question and it all deals with the science of salvation so with this science of salvation there is this beautiful thing where you could share the word of jesus and share the word of god and you don't have to pay the taxes because taxing jesus that is just bad However, when Jesus asked Papa God if he could sign up for a PP loan uh, or PPP loan, Jesus Christ walked into a government building and he requested an application for a PPP loan for the business of sharing his joy, sharing his word. And he listed all of his employees. It could be our evangelist friends across the world. So those were all his, all his employees. And Jesus filled out the little PPP loan and says, oh, I need to give this money to my employees at the evangelical churches. That's where they could work. And I don't have to pay it back. So on the day when many small business owners did not get their PPP loans, Jesus Christ was kicking back up on the cloud, up in the heaven with the green in his hands, making it rain on all his employees that he got his PPP loan. Jesus got millions and millions of dollars of PPP loans. He shared his wealth like the Christian man 
friends that he is and he shared it with all the evangelicals to make sure that their private jets had the gasoline to get them to faraway lands, that the pool chlorine made the pool so blue it looked like the oasis in the middle of the Moroccan desert. He wanted to make sure that all these little babies that didn't have my mama and papas, that they could find it. But the employees, they said, no, and they chunked the do side. That is why they're not opening the churches. Jesus got his PPP loan. He shared it with the employees and they don't have to pay it back. It's quite an interesting science of salvation, no? But Dr. Berger, I don't understand. Mm, what? If they're not paying taxes, then why are small businesses that are paying taxes aren't allowed access to the same loans, the same coverage? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So this is the little uh, writing, as they call it, in that science of salvation. So if your company were perhaps affiliated with some kind of religious uh, justification. So perhaps you should write down, say, Mr. Smith has a little to hardware shop, yeah? So if he were to put the name of, perhaps, and this is all speculation, that if he were to put the name of his company as Christian Hardware, perhaps there was even more opportunity for him to get the PPP loan. But of course, when you have a name like my church, I go to it every day. I simply step out my front door and I say, hello. Church of God with your blue sky and clouds. I sing hi to you. I don't need a concrete building with air conditioning and bad lighting and gold cups with bad plumbing to say that I love you. I simply walk out my front door. I inhale the fumes off of La Porte Highway 225 down in the southeast of Texas, Houston. And I say, thank you, God. Thank you for everything. And thank you for the ice cream that I had last night for dessert. I had this rocky road from Tillamook. It was so good, I must say. So, Dr. Berger, what would your advice be to small businesses that are minutes away from complete collapse? Are you saying that maybe they should change their name of the hardware company to, I don't know, Jesus Hammers? Well, I will say is this, that Jesus found himself at one side of the hammer and he's managed to inspire many people to do good in the world. I will say that. Go to the restaurant that doesn't have a big name. Go to the little taco trucks on the corners because those people are working hard for their money. Go to these little jewelry shops. Go to all these little candle shops, all these little Etsy shops online as well. I'm not pushing Etsy, although I did find a beautiful shelf made out of oak. Anyhow, the point is, is that you must shop small if you want to save small business. So yes, shop small. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Berger, let's go back to what's happening nationally. A lot of people have been requesting their state government tear down Confederate statues. In fact, some have taken it upon themselves to remove the statues. Now, my question to you, Dr. Berger, is why Confederate statues? Explain to us why. And also, do local citizens have the right to remove said statue? Mm, that's a very good question question and it all deals with the science of history past. I will say this, American history, or I should say United States history, is very, very complicated. So with these Confederate monuments, it's a very touchy subject as well. We have these men who fought for what some group of people feel is the American freedom of making choices and not being controlled by the man, by a big government. So when big government told these Confederate generals that you cannot do the things you are doing because they are not humane but then the confederates fought back and they said in the name of the fuck you science we talked about before you will not take my freedom I will do what I want because I am America. These monuments it deals with the moment in the past a lot of the pushback of these confederate monuments is that is my history. That is a part of who I am. Well you know when a lot of people say that I have to say that generally it was probably a very very big prostitute 
prostitute, if he was sleeping with so many women that had all these children that are related, or there was a brother-sister combo that was already making babies, and, and they made billions of people that are correlated and directly connected to the general elite. And also, they've made the connections with uh, 1984 about the government changing history by removing the monument. But, you know, there's something to say about removing bad history and placing it in a spot that needs to be like a museum, kind of like what we do with Egyptian artifacts and we do with the painting, is that the history is there for those who want to read about it, for those that want to be educated about it. With these Confederate monuments, it has been a perfect ploy for politics. And when I say a perfect ploy, that there are people that are voted by the constituents to govern a city. A sticky situation for some. As for myself, I am from Germany. We have knocked down all of the Nazi monuments because we do not want to be connected with such a travesty. And of course, there was this big monument. I'm sure many people are aware of it. It's called the German Wall that stood for communism, that stood for isolation, that stood for absolute hate. And we knocked it down. So yes, there's reason to believe that it may be positive. There's reason to believe that it's a negative. But of course, the politicians are going to jump on the bandwagon and say they want to eliminate your history. I'm just so confused by all this politicking. Just remove them already and put up a statue of a hot dog and macaroni and cheese on the baseball bat. You cannot get more Americans than that. Absolutely, Dr. Berger. But what do you think of some historians stating that the statues went up as sort of a warning to those that were liberated? I'm talking about the slaves. This will happen again or stay down we don't want to hear from you or this will Mm -hmm. happen again what do you think of that oh well this is good this all deals with the science of red alert so of course this was a warning to these newly freed african slaves that came didn't know the language well didn't know what to do and they wanted their freedom so of course there's that fear that fear is american as apple pie i love a good apple pie with some cinnamon and some jelly and you top it off with a nice Nice, good cross. Anywho, so you got the fear. As generations have progressed, industrialization, people are teaching about, oh, there's less to fear now because then generations that follow become braver. Generations that follow become smarter. Generations that follow really could give a shit about bullshit from the past. So what are they going to do? They're not going to take this warning anymore. This apparent warning that was provided, you know, These people that say this is your history, well, there you go. You've had this warning. Are you still warning people? Are you still warning that these big generals are going to kill you? Ask them that next time. If these were set up as a warning, are you still warning black people? Are you still warning all the people coming in from the South? That caravan that we are still waiting for of the MS-13 that's going to destroy the American nation? How long is this warning going to be? Have we already reached DEFCON 5000? Or what's going on here? For those that are saying that this is a warning, and I want to keep on pushing the warning, I do have to say that this younger generation is not going to tolerate this warning. They're going to eliminate it completely or they want to eliminate it completely. Mm -hmm. I am just here in Houston, Texas, uh, intubating these people because of a democratic hoax that seems to be causing pneumonia. That's all I can do at the moment. Absolutely. And before we go, Dr. Berger, we want to thank you so, so much for your service. We talked before the show and you were talking, of course, about the just profound fatigue that the medical community is facing right now, not just Mm -hmm. the amazing doctors and nurses, the CNAs, the EMTs, the cleaning staff, the admin staff. What is your advice, Dr. Berger, for the medical community and the essential employee community that are just working themselves to the bone? Mm. It seems that the essential employees are not so essential anymore because your freedom and your values of individualism seem to be taking precedent. What I will say, and not to make this, what's the word I'm looking for, as individualism as I had just commented, but it has gotten to something more than just washing your hands. When I read about United States history, there was this generation called the Greatest Generation, and they were part of this movement called the war effort. Whether or not the war was considered valid or important, but after the bombing on American soldiers, there were princesses giving their tiaras for scraps. There were ladies that were giving their pantyhose for parachute nylon. There was a sense of community to save the country. Back in 
in 1940 something. Now, comparing artillery and bombs to biohazards, distinctive wars, absolutely. But this is a battle that we are in now. And this is a battle that has so far proven to affect more American citizens than the entire world collectively, perhaps. So to become the greatest generation, that is my challenge to you. There was a possibility that this could have been taken care of in the past couple of months. But there's also reason to believe that it was never going to be taken care of given the state of the individual state of mind. So what I will say to help your fellow healthcare worker, if you're going to go out, be safe. If you don't like to wear a mask, don't worry. Hopefully nature will not affect you as it had many millions of people. But I will say that the emergency departments are filling up. We have gynecologists intubating people. So it's going to be a bit tricky if you end up in a hospital. Nature will take its course no matter what. People that are going to take preventative measures that have been proven to help. And those that don't take it, if you live that long, I applaud you. If you live to the point of a hospital visit, please take care. I want you to be with your family because there are many people that have passed without their family. And if you feel that you passing alone without your family takes precedence over living to see another day with your family, by all means, that is your privilege of living in this here United States. So I will say in final wording, continue with your life. Preventative measures are there. You have been educated. You are responsible for your life. But if you plan on pointing the finger to someone else for you not taking your life seriously or taking these preventative measures, it is you that is in the wrong. And it is you that is responsible for the continuation of that nonsense. Dr. Berger, that is very profound. And we thank you so much for taking time out of your very, very busy schedule to talk to us maybe sometime soon we can check back in with you if that's okay oh yeah yes it's been so long i miss this dr Berger. thank you this has been elocution with your host elo black